the expensive or the bigger international trip would go something on the north of 4.5 lakhs it has varied from 1.5 to 3 times or 4 times of that indian tourists have been spending big on travel but only 1% of these spends account for international trips so is international travel too impractical or too expensive for indians we spoke to three couples who have been planning their world tours one country at a time to find out how expensive it really is to travel the world and how you can plan yours better on different budgets we have traveled to about 75 countries we have done 12 countries together and uh, we've traveled seven countries our first international travel was when my daughter rishona was as young as 6 uh, months and my son was almost 3 and a half so our initial travels were to places which were very close to chennai like sri lanka after year and a half we went to singapore our actual you know the the meaningful and the big travel started in 2015 we did uh, france we did uh, luxembourg a very nice interesting segue from there our friends were there we did the uh, netherlands and we did belgium we largely have bucketed our travel into three primary uh, price groups of sorts one one for the first budget being under 1.5 lakhs and uh, within that budget we uh, uh, we end up covering countries like thailand bali uh, georgia sri lanka, sri lanka. Uh, some of these countries can be covered under 1 lakh as well the second group is below 2 lakhs and the countries uh, where we could cover in this budget are turkey kenya south, south africa, africa dubai singapore singapore yes if you are planning for a trip uh, in the range of 3 lakhs and above then you can consider the countries like any european country will come within that uh, new zealand can, new zealand um, united states uh japan japan yeah. yes japan will come under that even in europe your eastern europe's are much cheaper than your central and other parts of europe of if you do a just one place and uh, just for four days five days the cost increases you know Definitely. so to break the cost you add on more countries or uh, places which are nearby and then it as a as a you know uh, average it kinds of reduces so one more thing we end up saving on is uh, we figure out when to travel so there are certain places that you have to travel during a certain duration but in most places we end up traveling during shoulder season so that we can one is avoid a lot of crowd otherwise it becomes too crowded and other is of course you save a lot more cost because stays are expensive flights are expensive uh, everything is expensive during the peak season and especially if you go to pure tourist places so uh, we try to avoid that we travel during shoulder seasons as much as possible i think 2017 and 2018 we averaged about 20 21 countries for both the years yeah. each year so that's about a haul of 40 42 countries right between those two years <laughs> a lot of travel i think again you are able to do these things only because some framework wireframe exists in some form so there is no escape to solid planning for any travel the major expenses that we have looked at are your flights of course your stay your visa charges your local commute in that particular area um and the last is food so we <coughs> basically have an excel sheet where we have oh, yeah. mapped down all the countries that both of us would like to visit so we have around 60 countries in total that we 57 to be 57 precise 57 to be precise so we usually plan our travel one year in advance so we know next year what are the places that we are going to travel so this year's plan is already set i don't think there's any cheap there is only affordable <laughs> and uh, less affordable that's really the only two ways to categorize in a budget trip we end up with less number of days because we don't have to travel in too many places so usually countries like thailand or sri lanka um the time taken between travel time taken for travel between a couple of places is in, is just a couple of hours um and it's very close by but for a expensive trip because we have to travel in multiple cities uh we take more um, more number of days for a budget trip what we end up doing is taking one week leave from the office but for a big trip an expensive trip we end up taking two weeks of leave that helps us cover more places but the core differences between the two is in planning uh, right because uh, in low budget trip we don't end up spending too much time planning our itinerary while we always have an itinerary just to decide what all primary places we want to cover and ensure that you know we don't want to miss out on certain places but largely the difference like whenever we end up planning for a more expensive country that's extensive uh, planning yeah that that takes a lot of planning a lot of research 
But wait, even spending 1 to 2 lakhs on a trip every year is a big expense. So how do these couples plan their finances for their travels? I think it's roughly, we try to cap it within 20% of our annual expenses towards travel. Yeah. That's how we try to budget and try and operate. I put it on the Excel sheet. It's her job to make sure that the Excel sheet comes into real yeah, life. Everyone has a different life situation. So yeah. that number again, 20%. Is, is when you are comfortable. And we were comfortable only when we were in our mid-30s. Travel. We did that only after we squared off a lot of other key investments that are more traditional in nature. And that's what allowed us to make this number more practical. In the beginning, 20% would have been unimaginable. The budget only gets decided how much uh, savings we have done. Like let's say out of 70% of the investments done, like 30% is left. So we have to figure out our budget only from that 30%. We never touch our investments. Like we have done our investments and now we are left with 2 lakhs. So then we should think of Thailand or Dubai. Or if we have now 5 lakhs, so then we should think of Europe or Australia or depending on any other country. So I quit my job in 2022. Post that we have done multiple trips across. So our expenses for travel are not a separate bouquet of investments for travel, travel purposes. When we planned our fired number, the travels were factored into the yearly expenses which we are gonna incur. All our travel expenses is going to get funded by her salary. So that's already factored in that she would continue working in and our investments would passively keep on keeps on growing. Which would finally give us the liberty at a later stage of life when we, she finally decides to move on from our corporate career to explore different expensive places which we were not able to do right now. Travel is our priority. Yep. There is everything else will have to work around travel. The budget that we have allocated is 60% is for international trips. Then we have 20% for the uh, domestic trips and 20% for local plus our hometown uh, trips together. When it comes to travel fund, that would amount to around 10 to 12% of my total portfolio. So. Uh, one thing which is clear is that whatever instrument we choose, it has to be a fixed income instrument because we need an X amount and we need to know that amount that we will get at the end of the uh, year, month, whatever the plan is, right? What Vatsal has suggested is that we invest in an uh, equity arbitrage fund. What that does is, is basically has uh, post uh, tax yield is the highest compared to FTE and other fixed income uh, instruments. And that is the reason why he's basically suggested that we use this. And we also have uh, different funds for different okay. kinds of vacations that we do. So for international, we have put it in uh, a different uh, instrument. We, for uh, domestic, we have it in different a different fund. fund. If we are not able, you're not utilizing some funds some from some place, we can either like carry it forward or we can optimize that cost uh, and utilize that for some other travel that we would want to do. So the major expenses while we are traveling across happens in flights and hotels. These are the two most expensive things. So for flights, how it is, is that different cards have different days what discount you can get and what is the maximum discount limit. For Aditya, to and fro journey costs 50,000. The maximum discount is 15%. At 15%, what we can get is 6,000 rupees. It is capped accordingly by different cards. So then we'll not book our both tickets together. I'll book my tickets, she'll book her tickets. So that the discounts get bifurcated across two different bookings. So when we are doing this planning, in when it, especially when it comes to expensive trips, intercity travel uh, is also something that we have to figure out. And, and you book through that website, so it's yeah, cheaper. Yeah. It's very, very important. So this is something that we figured out uh, while we were doing the research uh, for Turkey. Uh, when we were trying to book intercity flight on the uh, Turkish Airlines or uh, no, Turkish, Airlines, Turkish yes. Airlines website, the price was almost half of what we saw in less, in, like, less than half. It was less, less than, than half. half? Yeah. Okay. We booked through that the worked. Turkish Airline website, and which was less than half of what any of the Indian aggregators would price for that intercity trip uh, in Turkey. Yeah. One very very important thing is luggage. So. And in any international flight, you can carry uh, about 30 kilos of luggage. But uh, sometimes in intercity uh, flight, you are only allowed you to carry 15. Allowance, yes. Yeah, so uh, you know it's important to know how much is that luggage allowance so that you ensure that you travel light uh, if you're going to travel intercity by uh, flight. Or at least check if you know what the baggage allowance is. Accommodation is probably the second thing that we... Accommodation is something out. we really work on and we spend a little more time. But we 
uh, do is we ensure that we look for a stay which has maximum metro connectivity or bus connectivity. Maximum 500 meters away, we should have a bus stop or a metro. So that's a primary criteria. We actually prefer buses to metros as well because when you take bus, you, see you can thing. actually see the city and you then you can figure out, okay, I like this place, maybe I'll come back here. Also, yeah. I think visas. Visas are something which yeah. you really need to study a little Correct. more. Most countries would, would not give you a visa before three uh, three months. So 90 days is typically the period before which you do it, unless you get the long-term visa or you apply well in advance for, let's say, the UK or maybe the US. So these are your pre-trip expenses, which are easier to plan and manage. But managing real-time spends like commute, sightseeing or food during your trip can be a way more difficult task since a lot of it is more unplanned. The first step is to know how you want to spend. We have cash for those petty transactions every day, you, you are hungry, you take a banana, you take a bottle of water, is that where you use the cash for? But for things, any uh, major spends, any, major spends uh, any tourist attraction where we know it's a good, reliable company where you can take your credit card and tap it there, we use our credit card. So right now we are using new X card. Most of the cards give you a forex markup of around 3.5%. So we have tried to avoid that by getting a cards which have zero forex mark. That also gives us the liberty of not getting a foreign currency from here also. You can go to an ATM, you can withdraw the currency from there itself. With forex, what happens is in some places where the local currency itself is not super regulated, right? The dollar rate exchange changes rapidly even between days, right? So uh, you have to be smart about when you're doing the exchange. Uh, more technically speaking, sometimes when you're doing a border run across a country, there will be a point where you can exchange, uh, you know, that local currency to, uh, for the next country's currency, which you can do before the check post, but you can't do after. The next step is to try and map out as much of the unplanned expenses as possible to have a certain level of predictability in your budget. I think commute is most mostly unplanned, but that actually, when you see at the end of the day, actually amounts to a decent amount. So you optimize it, of course, by doing local, by taking the local transport. That includes even while coming from airport to the hotel. Yeah. Most of the countries usually have this kind of vans and shared vans and across. So we take that thing. If you save, are able to save only 15,000. I'll using the word only, but yes, you saved 15,000. We don't do that so when it's petty, it increases to a bigger quantum. A lot of these have those commute cards, yeah. which works across all, all the uh, modes of transport. transport. Hong Kong also had it, even Singapore had it. Also, when kids were younger, they used to travel consistently. Oh, yeah. Hong Kong also had it, even Singapore had it. Also, when kids were younger, the travel costs oh, yeah. were much cheaper. In, in Europe, till age 10, everything is free. And plus, I would say various attractions, whatever they want to visit it. Like, you can always put down in your Excel file. Let's say, if 5 lakhs has been allotted, he has already put like wherever we are going to visit, this this is our daily budget for the food as well. The sightseeing basically is a is a family gathering on a dining table and we decide as no to what No more than one museum a day if yeah. you're traveling with kids. Involve your children when you're planning your travels. It's very important. If they are not enjoying your holiday really, oh, you know, it, it, it really right. uh, takes a backseat. What is important is we also check there are a lot of attractions which are only available for like which are closed on certain specific days. Oh, yeah. so I once... think the major attractions uh, like for example the Disneyland in Hong Kong, uh, they are expensive as, a, as an attraction. And so before you go there, before you book anything, just go to their official website and just see what days are they available, are they under maintenance yeah. or not. And look at reviews as well because they'll tell you which days are not crowded. Correct, yeah. Most of these tourist attractions, if you book online, you also have something called as an express pass. Or yeah. if you book a tour guide, you will always be able to cut the line. Especially places that you know are very touristy. Like Istanbul was very touristy. Every single spot had like some history, huge some story line, too. huge line. For this particular mosque, it was Hagia a four Sophia hour, was, I think four hours. Four hours line. And then because <coughs> we took a tour guide, we were able to get in in half an hour. They're definitely more expensive than your regular, uh, like, it's free, most of the places, uh, some of the places are free, some of them have uh, passed. But like things like um, Disneyland or Universal Studios, we took Express Pass, we didn't even think about it twice. Oh, yeah. One thing that I want to tell everyone, uh, the first time travelers is basically is that budget for surprises uh, and be open to that. Because a visit to a country, a new country will happen to you once or twice maximum, right? So you don't want to come home and regret that, oh, you wanted to do something. But just because 
you had some budgetary constraint, you were not able to do it. So be open to surprises, as I would say. If I had to go back to younger us and give us uh, dish out some advice, I would definitely say aim small, miss small uh, is the way to put it. So start with something predictable like Singapore. And I say predictable uh, with a grain of salt. Nothing in travel is predictable. But uh, ideal to keep the uh, the enamel, the you know the things that can, the variables that can awfully go wrong minimum. Stable currency, good geopolitical uh, situation, uh, comfortable weather. Uh, maybe do a Singapore. Figure out what your resistance levels are like, right? So there is no escape to solid planning. Right now also, if you will open Shomik's laptop, there will be five <laughs> plans already ready. So, you know, it's just this free time to keep adding on those countries in the Excel. And there are some countries which we have not even heard names of. So sometimes it happens like that. Yeah. And for, for us, specifically, the travel planning has helped us become more organized. We look at our finances also in a certain way because of our travel, so we know how to save, we become more uh, confident on how and when and where, <coughs> and where we can travel. Travel is the word itself, right? It's, it's a journey. Like I think for us, it was a journey in discovering a common passion that bind the four of us together. I don't think this will ever change. It's, it's our identity. The we have the world. And then you say that we have seen the world. Thank you for watching and supporting our channel. If you like the stories we tell, here's your chance to be a part of it. If you or anybody you know has an interesting financial journey to share, then please fill the form in the pinned comment below and we'll get in touch with you.